This is Sarah Thresh to NurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to remove surgical sutures, specifically simple interrupted sutures. Sutures, which are also called stitches, are used to close a wound that could have been sustained through like an injury or a surgical procedure. Now there's various types of surgical patterns and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to remove the most common type of surgical pattern which is the simple interrupted suture. And this is where there are individual sutures used to close the wound. In addition, as the nurse, you can see various types and here you will see pictured a simple continuous suture which is just as the name says a continuous strand of suture closing the wound. In addition to a vertical mattress suture, a horizontal mattress suture, a continuous blanket suture, also called a forward interlocking suture, and finally an interrupted cruciate suture as well. And cruciate just means cross-shaped. Now keep in mind, not all sutures need to be removed. Some suture material is made out of a dissolvable substance where it will actually dissolve in the body itself, while others have to be manually removed, which is what we're going to be doing in this video. In addition, depending on where the suture is located and the depth of the wound that the suture is closing, the suture can stay in for as little as five days versus two weeks. First, what you want to do is you want to verify the physician's order because as a nurse, before you can remove sutures, you have to have an order. Next, what you want to do is explain the procedure to the patient and get their verbal consent. A lot of patients ask, is this going to be painful? No, usually it's not. A lot of patients report a tugging or pulling sensation, but you can always give the patient pain medication if ordered prior to the removal of the sutures. Then gather your supplies. One thing you'll need is a dressing change tray. And before you actually remove your sutures, you'll always want to follow your hospital protocols because some hospitals say use sterile gloves to remove the sutures, while others say you can just use clean gloves. In this video, we're gonna demonstrate using sterile gloves. So our sterile gloves will come in here along with our sterile drape to put our supplies on and some gauze and our antiseptic to actually clean the suture line before and after the removal. Then of course, you're gonna need a suture removal kit. And this comes with our tweezers, our scissors to remove, to cut the suture, and some gauze to help us keep them in place. And then you'll need some steri strips. And the steri strips will be placed on the site where the individual suture was removed because one complication of suture removal is wound dehiscence. And this is where your wound will open up prematurely and putting these on will help prevent that. Then you're gonna perform hand hygiene and don clean gloves. Because first what we wanna do is we want to assess our wound before we remove the sutures. So you're gonna remove any old dressings that are present. And first what you wanna do is you want to check for infection. Is the site really red? Is it warm to the touch? Are there any hard areas? Is it oozing foul looking drainage or has a smell? Next, you wanna look at the suture line itself. Does the skin look nice and fused together or does it look weak? Like if you removed one of these sutures, that wound is gonna pop open. And if any of that is present, you wanna notify the physician before actually removing the sutures. Then we're going to doff our gloves, perform hand hygiene, and prep our supplies. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our dressing change tray. And whenever you open these up, on the top is usually the sterile drape, which we're going to easily just grab and lay over here, and the sterile gloves, which we're going to lay right here. And what we're gonna be doing is opening up the sterile drape, and we're going to drop our suture removal kit supplies and our steri strips onto the sterile drape because we're trying to keep everything as sterile as possible to help prevent infection. So what we're gonna do now is open up our drape. So we're just going to gently open it and we have about two inches on the inside to be able to reach so we can open it up. Now let's open our supplies and drop it onto our field. So first what we're gonna do is open our suture removal. Drop that in there and then discard that. And then take our steri strips and do the same. Now we're going to don our sterile gloves. And if you don't know how to put on sterile gloves, please watch my video on that. So what we're gonna do is pull these tabs open, and lay these down. 
And I'm going to glove my right hand first because I'm right handed. So I'm going to grab this cuff and pull it over my hand and pull the cuff down. Then I'm going to take this hand which is sterile and slide it underneath the cuff part of this. And I want to be careful not to touch my other hand. Okay, now I have them on. Now what we're going to do is open up our antiseptic because we're going to use this to clean the wound before suture removal and after. This helps decrease infection. So let's open these up. And inside you will have three swabs that have antiseptic on them. So now take the antiseptic swab and clean along the wound. This is going to prevent infection. And then what we're gonna do is discard the swab and let the area dry. Now that the area is dried, we are ready to remove the sutures. So we're going to take our gauze and we're just gonna set it beside of our work area because this is where we're gonna be dropping each suture. And we wanna dispose of those properly according to your hospital protocol because it's a biohazard. And you wanna count how many sutures you removed and analyze them, make sure the whole suture thread is intact, and document. So we're gonna take our tweezers and put those in our non-dominant hand, and we're gonna take our scissors and put those in our dominant hand. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove every other suture, starting at the second suture. Why is that? Because we want to prevent this wound from opening up prematurely. So doing that will help hopefully prevent that. And then after we remove every other suture, before we remove the other sutures, we're gonna put Steri strips just to help reinforce that wound even more. So two things you wanna remember prior to removing sutures. This is the really big thing you gotta keep in mind. Where you actually cut the suture thread. We're not going to cut on this side of the knot. Why is that? If we cut that side of the knot, when we go to pull that knot out, this part of the thread that's been in contact with the outside environment has germs on it, is gonna slide underneath that wound, introducing all those germs into that wound, leading to possible infection. So we want to cut on this side of the knot that's closest to the skin. So always remember that with these simple interrupted sutures. In addition, when we're actually removing the thread when we grab the knot, we don't want to grab the knot and pull the suture thread away from the wound. Why is that? If we pull away, that's gonna create tension on this incision line, possibly leading to opening up. So when we actually pull the thread up, we're gonna lift up gently and then we're going to pull over the wound. Starting at our second suture, what we're going to do is we're going to grasp the knot with our tweezers. Then we're going to take the scissors and we're going to just cut that part of the thread. Then we're going to lift up and pull over the wound. And then just look at your suture, make sure it's intact, it hasn't fell apart or anything like that. Then drop it into your gauze. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the other suture. So grab the knot, snip underneath it, then lift up and then pull over the wound. And then just check your suture thread and drop in the gauze. Then take a new antiseptic swab and clean the areas where you remove the suture and let that dry. Then we're going to apply our Steri strips in the area where we removed each suture. And you'll want to cut your Steri strips where they're at least 3 4 of an inch on each side of the incision and space them about 1 8 inch apart. So we're going to just take our Steri strip and line it up where we have about three-fourths of an inch on each side. And whenever you're applying Steri strips, you want to gently lay down one part of it, smooth it down, and then gently lay down the other side. Don't pull it or tug on it to create tension because Steri strips are strong and they can actually tear the skin. Then we're going to do the same thing with our other part. Line it up, smooth it down, and then gently lay on the other side. Now we're going to remove the remaining suture. So again, just grab your knot, cut underneath, pull up, and then pull over. And analyze your thread, looks good, and then place in the gauze. Again, repeat the same process for the next suture. Grasp the knot, cut underneath, then 
lift up and pull over. Look at it, looks good, and drop it in the gauze. And then our last one, same thing. Grab the knot, cut underneath, lift up a little bit, and then pull over. Look at your suture, looks good. Now let's say while we were removing it, this was starting to open up prematurely. We would stop what we were doing. Don't remove any more sutures. Cover it up with a sterile gauze and notify the physician immediately. Then we're gonna take a new antiseptic swab and we're just gonna clean those areas again where we remove the sutures and we're gonna let that dry. The side is dry, so now we're going to apply our steri strips the same way we did before, leaving 3 4 inch on each side of the incision, about 1 8 inch apart. Apply our next one. Lining it up. And then apply our last one, same way. After doing that, you'll want to look at the site and ask yourself, is this an area that's going to easily have friction on it, like rubbing up against jeans or experience a lot of moisture? If so, you'll want to apply a dressing, give the patient dressing supplies to change it regularly, educate them about signs and symptoms of infection, and when to expect these steri strips to fall off, which is usually within 10 days and tell them to let them fall off all by themselves and do not remove them. Then after that, what you wanna do is you want to doff your gloves, perform hand hygiene, and document. Okay, so that is how you remove surgical sutures. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.